Today we're going to learn how to find the volume of circular objects. So we're going to look at cylinders, cones, and spheres. You should be on page 47 in your notes packet to look at uh, cylinders. The formula for the volume of a cylinder is volume equals pi times radius squared times height. You will typically see this written as capital B times H. In a formula, when one of your variables is capital, that usually indicates something because variables are always lowercase. In this case, if you have an uppercase B, that stands for area of the base. So when we have a cylinder, we multiply the area of the base times the height of the cylinder. Well, when you look at the first formula that I showed you, pi times radius squared, this would be the area of the base because the base of a cylinder is a circle. So we would find the area of the circle first and then multiply by the height of the cylinder. So let's look at an example. In this problem, you can see that the height of the cylinder is nine. And you can see that the radius of the base is five. So the radius is five here. Well, we're going to use that in our formula. So our formula is volume equals pi times radius squared. So I'm going to say pi times five squared, then times height. So then I will multiply by nine. Well, because we have to follow the order of operations, we would multiply our exponents first. So we would do five to the second power, which is 25. Now I'm going to multiply pi times 25 times nine. One way to do this is to multiply the 25 and the nine first, which is 225. Then I can use that to multiply by pi. So now I'll do 225 times pi, and that will give me 706.5. Now you'll notice that this is centimeters cubed because when we measure volume, volume is the amount of space that it takes to fill an object. Well, that is cubic units because we fill with cubes. So volume is always measured in cubic units. For number two, when we find the volume of this cylinder, we see that the radius is eight and the height is 13. So we don't wanna get confused just because the cylinder is tilted on the ground. The base is still the circle and the height is still the distance or the that connects one circle to the other. So when I plug this into my formula, I'm going to do pi times radius squared, so the radius is eight, and then times the height, which is 13. So pi times eight squared times 13. I'm going to multiply eight to the second power first, which gives me 64. Then I'm going to multiply 64 times 13, which gives me 832. Well, I'm going to now multiply pi times 832, or I'm going to use 3.14 for pi, and that gives me 2,612.5 inches cubed. For number three, you see that this cylinder has a diameter of 18 feet. I know that this is the diameter because it goes all the way across. So if this has a diameter of 18 feet, then I need to find the radius. Well, the radius is just half of the diameter. So the radius would be nine feet. The height of the cylinder is seven feet. Now I'm going to use both of these to plug into my formula. So pi times radius squared, so that would be pi times nine squared, and then times the height, which is seven. So I would have pi times nine squared times seven. Well, I would multiply nine to the second power first, which would give me 81. Then I would multiply 81 times seven, which is 567. And finally, I would multiply all of that by 3.14. And once I multiply that, I get a total of 
0.4 cubic feet or feet cubed. Now I want you to try number four and put your answer in the chat. For number four, you should get 1,808.6 meters cubed. This is because you need to use a radius of six. You are given this measurement on your rectangle or cylinder, I'm sorry, but this goes all the way across. That means that the diameter is 12, but in your formula, you need the radius. So if the diameter is 12, that means that the radius is six. The height is still 16. So we're plugging in six here and six to the second power is 36. And now we would multiply 36 times 16, which would give us 576. We would then multiply that times 3.14 and get 1,808.6 meters cubed. Now we're going to look at the volume of cones. If you'll remember from the beginning of class, you, we saw that a cone is actually the exact same as a cylinder, but it's just one third of it. So the formula for a cone that you will see most often is this, one third times, again, capital B, which means area of the base, and then times the height. Well, a cone's base is still a circle, so that would be this pi r squared. And then you would multiply that times the height, so that's where this comes from. Well, multiplying by one third is the same as dividing by three. So that's why the formula that we can look at is taking the area of the base written out as pi r squared, multiplied by the height, and then divided by three. So let's look at how we would do this. This cone has a radius of four and a height of six. So when I plug this into my formula, I'm going to say pi times four squared and then times my height of six. And once I get done with all of that, I can divide by three. So I'll do pi times 16 because I'm going to do my exponents first and four to the second power is 16. And then the rest of this still says times six and divided by three. Well, I can multiply 16 times six, which would give me 96. And now I have pi times 96 divided by three. Well, the next thing I would do is multiply 3.14 times 96. That's going to give me 301.44. And then I'll divide by three, which gives me a volume of 100.5 inches cubed. For number two, you can see that this has a radius of five feet and a height of nine feet. So I'll plug this into my formula, pi times radius squared, so pi times five squared, then times the height, which is nine, and all divided by three. I'm going to do five to the second power first, which would give me 25. So I'll have pi times 25 times nine, and then I will divide all of that by three. So if I do 25 times nine, I get 225, and now I need to multiply that by pi. Well, when I multiply that by pi, I get 706.5, but I still need to divide this by three. And when I divide this by three, I get 235.5 cubic feet. For number three, you'll notice that for this cylinder or cone, I have a diameter of five centimeters. So I need to find the radius. Well, the radius is half of this. So five divided by two is 2.5. So this has a radius of 2.5 centimeters. The height is still eight centimeters. So now I would use these two measures to put into my formula. So I would do volume equals pi, times my radius squared, times my height, and then divided by three. I would need to solve 2.5 to the second power first. That would give me 6.25, which I could then multiply by eight. When I multiply 6.25 times eight, I get 50. And now I'm going to multiply 50 times 3.14. That gives me 157. Then I'm going to take 157 and divide by three 
and I'm going to get a volume of approximately 52.3 centimeters cubed. Now I want you to do this, um, the volume of this cone and put it in the chat. The volume of this cone is 975 meters cubed because this gives you the measure of the diameter. But if the diameter is 18, you need the radius, which is nine. So you'll plug that into your formula, pi times nine squared times 11.5 divided by three. Nine squared is 81. And then you'll multiply 81 times 11.5, which is 931.5. Then you will multiply this times 3.14, which gives you 2,924.91. Finally, you're going to take all of this and divide by three, and you're going to get a volume of approximately 975 meters cubed. All right, the last shape that we are going to look at is a sphere. A sphere has a formula that says four thirds pi times radius cubed. The easiest way to do this is to do four times pi times radius cubed and then divide the whole thing by three. So when we look at this sphere, we see that it has a radius of 15. And that's all I need for this formula because a sphere doesn't technically have a height. It would be its diameter. So we're really just using pi and radius. So when I plug into my formula, I'm going to do four times pi times my radius, which is 15, but cubed, so to the third power. Now, when I have the radius cubed, remember that means I'm doing 15 times itself three times. So that's the first thing that I would need to do. And when I multiply 15 times 15 times 15, I get 3,375. I can then multiply that by four because remember the commutative property says that we can multiply in any order. So I combined 3,375 and four to get 13,500, which I can then multiply by 3.14. And when I do that, I get 42,390. I need to then take that number and remember to divide it by three. So when I divide this by three, I get 14,130 inches cubed. For number two, you can see that this sphere has a radius of six meters. So when I plug this into my formula, I'm going to get volume equals four times pi times six cubed and then divided by three. Well, I need to do my exponents first. So six cubed is the same as six times six times six, which is 216. Well, I'm going to do 216 times four, which gives me 864, which I can then multiply by pi or 3.14. When I multiply 864 times 3.14, I get 2,712.96. Now I need to divide that by three. When I divide that by three, I get a final volume of approximately 904.3 meters cubed. For number three, you can see that we are given the diameter of 14 feet because it goes all the way across, but my formula needs the radius. So if the diameter is 14, then I know that the radius is seven. So I'm going to use that in my formula. Volume equals four times pi times seven cubed divided by three. Well, I would do seven to the third power first, which is seven times seven times seven, and that gives us a value of 343. Next, I would multiply 343 times four to give me 1,372. I multiply that times 3.14, and I get 4,308.08. I need to then divide all of that by three, and I'm going to get a final volume of 1,436 feet cubed. Now I want you to do number four and put the volume in the chat. For number four, the volume is 113 meters cubed. You would start by finding the radius. So they give you the diameter of six, but that means that the radius is three. You would multiply 
3 times 3 times 3 to get 27. So that's why we got 27 right here, which would multiply by 4 to get 107. 107 times pi, or 3.14, is 339.12. And then we need to divide by 3, which is going to give us 113 meters cubed.